Now, you'll find that we often have a situation where there's actually more than one wave traveling through a medium. So this can happen when a wave is reflected. We've got the incident wave, which is ongoing. We've been looking at pulses, but remember waves keep going. And then we've also got the reflected wave. So what we're going to look at now is how we add these waves together to get the total wave that we see when we look at that medium. So to do this, we're going to need to make use of the principle of superposition. The principle of superposition position tells us that if two or more waves are moving through the same medium, the resultant value of the wave function is the algebraic sum of the wave functions of the original waves. So that's quite a mouthful, but basically it just means add the waves together at every point. So when waves travel through a medium, they can pass through each other without being destroyed or altered. What we see is the superposition of those waves but if the waves are finite and end, then you'd see the waves separate out eventually. Okay, so basically what the principle of superposition means is imagine that we had these two waves input as signals into a medium. So here's our first wave, which we enter into the system. And then on the same piece of string, we have this other wave as well. And the question is, well, what does that piece of string look like? And what the principle of superposition tells us is, well, just add the amplitude of the wave at each point. So at zero here, this wave is zero. And so our resultant wave is going to be zero at zero. Let's consider the point two. Here, this, this wave is a maximum and this wave is, well, just a small value. So you can see this is going to be the maximum from here plus just the small value from here. Now to round about five, around about here, we have a negative wave here, while there's a positive wave down here with pretty much the same magnitude. So at that point, those two waves cancel each other out. And then when we've got up here, we've got a positive wave and a negative wave with a very similar amplitude. So the amplitude of the resultant wave is very low. Okay, so when we add waves together, it's known as constructive interference. So if we have positive amplitudes coming together, they come together and pass through each other and continue onwards. So you can see this in this little movie here in a minute, the blue waves, indicate the um, the waves which are being generated and then the red wave is the wave that you'd actually see on the string. So you can see they pass through each other and they continue. And when they are on top of each other, they add together constructively. Destructive interference on the other hand is when we have a wave or a pulse with a positive amplitude added to one with a negative amplitude and in this case they partially cancel each other out and then they continue on uninterrupted so again we can see this in this little video down here so in this case these two waves perfectly cancel each other out so we end up with a flat piece of string at the point where they are just passing each other Okay, so what we're going to do now is add together a couple of waves which are identical but have a different phase constant. So we're going to consider two sine waves identical apart from their phase constant. So you know that the equation for a wave is y is equal to a sine kx minus omega t. The minus shows us that it's traveling to the right. And then we're going to have a second wave with a slightly different phase constant. So we just add the phase constant in here. And then what we want to know is, well, what's the resultant wave? So to get the resultant wave, we just have to add them together. Y1 plus Y2. You can see this A, the amplitude, is a common factor. So we can take it out the front. And then we just have to add these two sine functions here, these two terms here. So to do that, we're going to need to make use of our trigonomic identities. You do need to know how to use these for this course. They are provided to you on the formula sheet. So in this case, what we're doing is adding together two sine waves. So sine A plus sine B is equal to two sine of A plus B on two cos of A minus B on two. 
Okay, so this is what we were trying to add. We have y1 plus y2 is equal to a sine kx minus omega t. So this is the a in our case, sine kx minus omega t plus phi. So that kx minus omega t plus phi is the b. So we're doing, this is equal to 2a, where a is the amplitude, and then we have to do this plus this. So kx plus kx gives us 2kx. Omega t, well, minus omega t minus omega t gives us minus 2 omega t plus phi on 2. And then times cos of this one minus this one. So we could have a minus sign here if we want. In the end, it doesn't matter if we have the minus sign there or not. Okay, so now we can simplify this a bit further because 2kx divided by 2 is kx. 2 omega t divided by 2 is omega t plus phi on 2 times cos phi on 2. Okay, now what you can see is cos phi on 2, that is just a constant. Once we've chosen our phase constant at the start, how far out of phase our waves are, this thing is a constant. So 2a cos phi on 2 is a constant, and so that is the amplitude of our new wave. This wave now has the same form as the original wave. We've got sine of kx minus omega t plus phi on 2. So it's got a slightly different phase constant. It's slightly out of phase. The phase is halfway between those two waves. But it, it's just a wave traveling to the right with the same speed and everything as the original wave. Okay, so let's consider what this looks like for different values of this phase constant. So let's start, to be easy, with, a, with no phase difference between the waves. So phi is equal to zero, we're just adding two identical waves together. In that case, cos of phi on two is one, because cos of zero is one. And so we end up with just a wave with double the amplitude of our original two waves. So everywhere the waves add and we end up with double the amplitude. That really makes a lot of sense. And this will actually be the case um, if phi was 2 pi, because cos of 2 pi on 2, which is pi, is 1 as well. And if phi was 4 pi. So whenever there's an integer multiple of 2 pi out of phase, our waves are going to add together completely constructively and we'll end up with a wave with double the amplitude. Now let's consider the case where the initial phase difference is pi or 180 degrees. In this case, cos of pi on 2, this, this term here, this term here is 0. So in this case, the two waves completely cancel each other out. So that kind of makes sense too. If we're adding together two waves which are completely out of phase, then everywhere they are going to cancel out. We can also substitute in values in between, so say pi on 3. If we had a phase difference of pi on 3, then we've got cos of pi on 6, which from the triangle identities we know is root 3 on 2. So then we've got a slightly different amplitude here, and, and the wave is slightly out of phase. So we, we can actually draw diagrams to show this. So what we're doing here is we're adding together the red and the sorry the blue and the green waves to get the red wave. So in this case, the blue and the green waves are completely on top of each other, which is why you can't see the green wave, and they add to give a wave with double the amplitude. In the second case, where they're completely perfectly out of phase, we just see a flat piece of string or a flat medium. And then when they are slightly out of phase, you can see what the resultant wave looks like. It's got an amplitude between these first two cases here, and the phase is slightly shifted so that it's, it's halfway between the two input waves. Okay, now one way that we can get this phase difference between two waves is if we have one input wave. So we've got one input wave here, and we're giving it two paths that it can travel. So in, in one case, it goes up and along this gray bit and back down to, in this case, the ear. And in the other, along the other path, it goes this way. So one way to get these two paths out of phase is to give them different path lengths. So if this wave going up here travels, oops, sorry, travels a, integer number of wavelengths different from the wave down here, 
then we're going to end up with the waves when they construct being 0, 2 pi, 4 pi or 6 pi out of phase. Whereas if this path going up here is half a wavelength behind, well, half a wavelength different in length to this one, we'll actually end up with completely destructive interference between the two waves. So we can write this as an equation. The path difference, so that's the difference in the two path lengths, divided by the wavelength times 2 pi is equal to the phase difference. So sometimes you'll need to convert from path lengths into phase differences, and this is how you do that. So if you're in 1131, you can practice this with homework set 6, question 8. Okay, so that's the end of the new material, so we're on to questions for you to try. So question, the lower path R1 is fixed, so this path is fixed, and this upper path R2 can be varied by changing the height h. Describe the relationship between the height and what you hear, and assume initially that R1 is equal to R2. So here's a hint, what you hear will be related to the amplitude of that wave. If the amplitude's high, you'll hear a loud noise. If the amplitude's low, you'll hear a, a much quieter noise.